Nice. Hello. What's up? How are you? Good. How are you? Doing well. Cannot complain at all. Um, body's a little beat up still, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I saw that video. I know. It was, uh, I, I was happy overall. It, uh, it worked out well. I'm stronger than I thought, uh, <laughs> but it was a different experience taxing my system that much. I've never, I haven't done that in a really? very, very long time. Really? Yeah. So it was cool, but definitely hard. And now I see why my blood sugar was like low the whole time. <laughs> yeah. So I know I got to fix that and make sure. Um, so yeah. we'll probably be talking about that at some point, me and you of how to fix my blood sugar problems. Cool. <laughs> yeah. We can definitely talk about that. Um, yeah. Cause that's my only issue. I don't know why I just, I know it's timing, nutrient timing, but I'm not good at it, I guess, because mm -hmm. I get caught up treating, whatever it may be. I know that's not what we're talking about at this point. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, my blood sugar drops really rapidly when I train. Do you um, eat enough? Like, I'm so assuming you have a meal beforehand. Yeah, yes, but it depends how close. That's the thing. Like, sometimes it'll be an hour, two hours, um, and that's not even good enough sometimes. Like, if I, I eat at 11, I train at 12. What happens? It doesn't work happens if you fuel during training that's what i do so i started changing that it helps most times but sometimes it doesn't either so i'm like all right there's definitely yeah correlation i may not be eating enough the night before that's really yeah. what i think it is coming down to and um adrenals maybe yeah. yeah so anyway besides the point um we'll talk about that at some point we'll go over that <laughs> but we're going to talk about posture today and little things about posturing and what can actually happen with is it true that like bad posture causes pain and all that fun stuff mm -hmm. because you know i'm sure we've all heard our parents yell at us some days sit up tall <laughs> straight out and it's like all right well is that entirely true um to have to do that you know yeah so what is good posture depends it's <laughs> so like it's like what's hard to tell is everybody's posturing is so different. Some people are born with wider set hips. Some people are born with more of like a curved back. Some people have scoliosis like I do. So it really is so hard. There is no perfect posture. Yes, you could think of like, what is it? Michelangelo's David, the guy standing with the statue uh, and like anatomy postures and all that stuff. You can kind of think of those as like perfect posture, but like humans don't work that way because we're never... Uh, we're never a 2D object. We're never flat on the ground. We're never flat like that. We're always moving. Our bodies, gravity's constantly pulling us down. So like, there is no perfect ideal posture. There's anatomical posture that we learn in school because that's just a way to orient yourself on where to find things in the body. But like, truly a perfect posture, like, does that exist? Yeah. That's the question. So what kind of cues would you give someone to? sit or move with their best posture i guess sit we'll start sitting first so because what i think you're saying is two like two people could be sitting in a way that's okay for their body but it might not look like this yeah okay no and that's it that's exactly that's exactly the case uh, it's kind of one of those things of yes movement is always good so like my cues are to if you notice you're sitting for eight hours straight and haven't moved you probably want to get up and move that's more or less my cues. It's not like, oh, fix your posturing. It's maybe just switch positions or get out of mm. that position. Especially like, there's no like real research study saying like, okay, this posture for prolonged periods of time will cause you pain. It's more or less, if you're experiencing some type of discomfort, your body is just telling you a signal like, hey, I want to move. Right. So it's not like, like that, that posturing is making you have pain. You could just, your body be telling you like, oh, let's get, let's move a little bit so, and then it's like all right <laughs> a lot of the issues are coming from not moving versus the actual position itself yes yeah you know and like that's what happens most people like when you talk to them about posturing and whatever they're like oh yeah i don't really move and it's like well that's ideally just trying to break it up move a little mm -hmm. bit but your body's sending you signals like if it's hurting you to sit a certain way don't sit that way mm -hmm. unless you're trying to achieve a certain goal like stretch a certain way or get a muscle loose a certain way different story but if you're just trying to sit to be comfortable to watch tv do work find a posture that's comfortable right. for you and like so what i say is there's no like perfect posture really is because i'm a prime example of 
of that because I have scoliosis and I'm self-correcting all day long. When I, pe when I show people my natural, actual posture, they're like, oh, you can actually see the curvature, mm -hmm. like how I'm flexed and stuff like that. And they're like, oh, really? And I'm like, yeah, but naturally, because I've been doing it for so long, self-correcting, I stand differently than I actually would present myself as, mm -hmm. you know? And so like using posturing as like when I screen people or just in general, people look at people, you can't really tell it's a it's a photo like it's a quick glimpse of what's going on in their day mm -hmm. so if someone's standing if you're standing in front of me i'm like amanda just stand there and you're like and i'm like trying to break down your posture you could just one mentally know i'm stand watching you so you're going to stand up more upright than you normally do because someone's watching you mm -hmm. you know someone's looking at to see if there's something just like when i have people walk it's the same thing they always walk better unless they're really in agonizing pain, but they always walk better in front of me because they're like, oh, he's watching me. Let me right. walk. Naturally. I, yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. So yeah. with posturing, it's the same thing. It's like, it's a little snapshot of what's going on in our day when you're in front of me. So I can't really use posturing as an example of this is why you're causing pain. And it's to call myself out on it. It's like, am I being biased in the sense of if I see somebody that has right shoulder pain and I see their their shoulders are a little bit more forward. Am I more inclined to think like, oh, mm -hmm. okay, this person has pain because their shoulders are rounded. Is that entirely true? Maybe not. Maybe their shoulders are always rounded and that's not entirely the case of them having pain. It's a lot you more know? complicated than. Exactly. But so we look at it and we try to be biased a little bit and we're like, oh, wait a second. So like, it's just one of our thought processes. I feel like I have so many questions. I'm going to start with the, um, with the phone one, though. Yeah. Or even just, like, laptop used to, like, the head coming forward. Yes. And the shoulders rounding. Like, do you tend to, like, is that an issue? No. It's not. not. There's actually, like, so I'm doing my research for this fun topic. Cool. Um, there's, like, real, the studies that have been out most recently about, like, text neck, we'll say. Yeah have not really shown there to be a correlation between extended periods of time of smartphone use and pain of the neck and stuff like that. Okay. And interestingly enough, in men, aged males, age 17, um, and with extended periods of like forward neck posture did not correlate to having act pain later on in life. But females who actually sat upright more and like kept their neck more straight at 17 years old, they seem to have an increase in one of the studies I read seem to have an increase in pain later on in life at 22 years old. So it's like, wait a second. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, wait, so you're telling me if they look forward more, they're not going to have as much pain. So it's, it's interesting to think that um, because it's reversed, but it's interesting, like why? So the study really said like, it's got to delve in more why that's possible. But yeah. So like text neck you'll hear, or like looking down at smartphone computer use, it's not entirely that is, the cause of your pain you know it could be that you're it always comes it, i feel like over the times of as, as we do these more a lot of it's going to come down to the same thing of the question is are you working more in front of your computer than exercising in general and getting mm -hmm. stronger so are you just naturally getting weaker and that's why you're having yeah. pain and you think it's just posturing <laughs> the way i'm making sense of, and you can tell me what you think too of that study is maybe I'm thinking, you know, in terms of when you're looking at someone's movement patterns or a squat, everyone's squats gonna look a little bit different mm -hmm. and you don't necessarily want to tell everyone the same mm -hmm. things. And we're not, yeah. not looking for perfect symmetry. We're looking for the movement pattern that benefits you that you can get stronger in and that feels good, right? Yes. Okay, and so with posture, if yep. someone's co constantly trying to like self-correct or like kind of like sit, Cause like, honestly, like this just feels like uncomfortable yeah. for me. Like this feels good. You know, I'm like yeah, relaxed. Yeah. So like, do you think that some of the pain could be coming from like putting yourself in positions that might not be as natural mm. or. Well, so that's, I, I think I talked to you about this when I first, when we went over your squat a long time ago when I first met you. Yeah. Um, and I tend to do this too, cause I have a more lower dosis, which means my low back is curved a little bit more than most people's. Yeah. Um, females usually do as well, um, as well as I do. I know that for a fact. So like we're given the cue to have a hinge pattern when we squat and, you know, arch our backs. However, if you give that cue to someone like me who has more of a lower do dosis or even you, and I worked on this with you, when we first started like looking at your squat, you would like arch your back first and then squat down. And I'm like, you're already in a neutral spine position. You don't need to overextend your back and then squat down because then 
you're just arching onto a, you're overarching on the back mm -hmm. and then squatting in a core thing and that's gonna bother you a little bit more because it seemed to, because you were having some pain with it. Yeah. So it's like those cues, like you're saying, don't always hold entirely true based on what you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. Yes, if you're like, hey, listen, I have pain in my shoulders, but when I pull my shoulder blades back, it feels better and it goes away. Pull your shoulder blades back. Right. <laughs> right. You know, but if that's not the answer, then it may not be that. Like, it's not a blanket statement of like, oh, this is perfect posture. This is correct. Stand up tall. Then you won't have pain anymore. That's not mm -hmm. the case. It, it won't, it can't, it doesn't work that way. It's because of everybody based on how they're born, their anatomy, like their bone anatomy. Uh -huh. That's, that's really how you can help decide what's a good posturing and all of that. And I think like something to remember with someone, like it's hard to tell too, because things like scoliosis exist, all those things where you may be like, for me, working on somebody. And as my friend was working on me this weekend, there was like, she's poking around at some things. And I was like, remember I have scoliosis. So just so you know, things may feel off, but don't try and correct them because I've had it my whole life, you know, because that's just, just like my one, my one rib was flaring a little bit more. And she's like, oh, wait a second. And I was like, remember, like I'm technically rotated a little bit. Right. So my rib will flare a little bit more, but and that's, that's okay. Different. Yeah, what are we gonna do? Correct something that I was born with? Right. You know? And that's the idea of coming back to like, we're not meant to be in perfect symmetry. Yeah. It's no okay to have a little bit of imbalance going on. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, so, go ahead. Go ahead. I, just I was gonna say, but that's what it comes down to is, it's okay to be a, a little unbalanced because like, like I said, calling myself out of looking for imbalances, because that's what we technically do. And it's like, okay, am I inclined to think that this posture is causing them pain because they have X thing, their shoulders a little bit lower, that's probably causing their pain when it could definitely not be causing their pain. It's right. just, it's like, oh, here's caused. something I can cling to. Yeah. yeah. And this is why like, I love how you approach things because it's always root cause. Yeah. Like what, yeah. What do we do? Getting to the point. <laughs> you know. Exactly. Rather than just like treating the area. Yeah. Um, so what about chairs and certain like back pads or seats? Like are, mm. is there anything you recommend or is there any like, yeah. I mean. Yeah. I know what you're asking. Okay. Um, so it'd be one like there's these things called McKenzie rolls. They tend to put your back in a more neutral spot. Um, you'll see like, you'll see office chairs that say, oh, excellent lumbar support. Great, awesome. The question is, do you need the lumbar mm -hmm. support? You know, mm -hmm. it's hard to recommend one thing over the other because you may not need it. Right. A lot of things I say, just the main thing when it comes to sitting, especially is making sure your feet are on the ground. Okay. That's kind of a huge factor. Like a lot of people, if your feet are dangling, that's not ideal then. And why is that? Because you're, if your feet are dangling, you're not, you don't feel as supported. So your core musculature is going to work a little bit more to whether position wise, hold you upright, all that stuff. When your feet are grounded, just your feet are on the ground, less, your body needs less stimulus, we'll say, to keep you in one place at one time, okay. you know? So when, when your feet are grounded, you can just, you can, you're more likely to sit up in a p posture of comfort for yourself, okay. as opposed to, to like slouch down or like be in a different thing because you're not I grounded. I can feel you know? that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like four points of contact. The more points of contact you have on the ground, the more stable you feel, the better your body will feel because okay. it comes down to stability. Um, so those supports, like a lumbar support, um, if it helps you, great. But like, there's also the thing where some people do the reverse of it. If some people, like this is where it's never one size fits all. If I put a lumbar roll behind somebody and one, they may feel it on their back and push away from it because they don't like that feeling, mm -hmm. you know? So like, it, it's like, will you get the impulse you want out mm -hmm. of it? Cause it's like, oh, I feel something like my car. I don't know why my car things do this, but they push on the back of my head. I don't like that feeling. So I, I hate kind of, that. I know yes. what you're talking about. So yeah. I tend to drive with my head forward a little bit more cause I don't want that touching the back yeah. of my head, you know? <laughs> so it's funny. like, do we give somebody that to like fix their neck posturing? But what if they, what if they do the reverse? They're like, no. Right. I don't like this. So is you it know? almost like an orthotic for a foot? It could be. It's something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you never know which way things are going to go. Like, an orthotic can work great. However, 
are you pushing away from the orthotic or like working it's allowing the orthotic to do its job mm -hmm. and you'll get that sometimes people, people like will be like my orthotics aren't working well, okay then it's not that's it's not so answer. interesting it just makes it that much more complicated when you take in mm -hmm. you know how the human responds yeah you have to take so and that's the thing of where always my approach is well does it work try it out you right. know i can recommend it i've seen it work with x amount of people but there's always going to be those 10 people that are like you know it didn't work for me all right, right then great then take it out yeah you know if and you're noticing your i mean they never find yeah. that works for 100 percent exactly. people exactly yeah so like like you said i think the best way is to do things that make you more comfortable as in like getting your feet on the ground like mm -hmm. making sure your feet are planted making sure your hands are in a good position um when you're typing things did, like that do you right? have a back to the chair like a nice back you can or because right now i sit in these ones and they're yeah. just you know it's not a work chair or anything like that and i'm i'm moving around all day though like i'll take a couple calls and then i'll get up i'm not yeah. sitting here for more than an hour or two ever and i think so that's, I think the that's part of the important. Even the chair, even though the chair is that uncomfortable and it's wood, yeah. I'm not feeling any sort of pain from it because I'm moving. And that's really what your initial point was. It's probably not from the posture itself. It's just from the lack of movement. Yeah. I think it's because like, once again, we have to take and I messaged my friend this day, this morning. I was like, I love how we're being so holistic. Like, you know, like just picturing the whole body. You know, we have to just picture everything taken into account. Like the real question is, did you, like you said, are you moving as much mm -hmm. when you're working in bed, whatever it is for extended period of time? But are you noticing there's a trend in the last month or so? You're like, okay, I have pain. I've been sitting a lot for work, like yeah. more than normal. I've also have not been exercising at all. So it's like, wait a second. Is it truly the posturing at work for sitting that's causing you discomfort? Or are you having discomfort because you've been sitting for X amount of time and also not exercising and taking breaks from sitting. So now your body's not feeling as good as it could feel because mm -hmm. you're not working the muscles, changing up stimulus to your body and stuff. And you're just doing the same thing routinely over and over again. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's, it's that question you have to ask yourself, like, which is it, you know? Right. Right. Um, and that's the hard part. <laughs> I have another question mm -hmm. for you. So I have, should have a few people that I work with that are, working like this where they're standing and then looking down at a table yeah. and the table is seems to be like a little bit too yeah. low so they're in this position all day and one particular i mean having like upper back mm -hmm. pain and it didn't start until he went back to this particular job yeah. so that's not is it not necessarily like a position problem but more so the amount of time you're spending in it that could be for him yeah for something like that definitely it's timing and all like that with that client of yours, I, I would say like, say, Hey man, like, or theme, her, yeah. uh, whatever. He's a guy, so um, okay. yeah. Yeah. Um, say just like, see what happens when you take 15 minute interval breaks and see if that, mm -hmm. that relieves some of the tension you feel, because yes, there is going to be some tension over time where you're like looking down, there'll be a buildup of tension because you're in that same position. And if you're doing that for an hour, anybody would be like right. this, like reaching down. Right. It's kind of like, well, I have suggested maybe getting something more elevated. That would be the first yeah. thing I would say. Okay. But some people don't, it depends where they work and all that stuff. Sometimes it's not readily available right. and right. like, okay, let's address this right away. Some people have to get it approved and go through a whole rigmarole of how to get things mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, what can we do in the interim of that? Maybe it's taking 15 minute intervals of switching, like just literally 15 minutes, just do a circle around his desk and then come back to his desk and see what happens. Like do it for two minutes, come back and see if that seems to help relieve his pain every 15 to 30 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. And what because, if you yeah, to take breaks like that? If they're not, then we have to, then you have to just discuss literally raising the desk up. That yeah. has to happen. Yeah. yeah. Cause especially cause like I said, if he's having pain, if you're having pain in a certain posture, is it the posture? Maybe, but not really all the time. But is your body telling you, I don't want to be in the sustained position for uh -huh. long periods of time? Uh -huh. So it's and, not about standing perfectly. It's just about the sustained amount of time. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. sustained. Yeah. It's sustained <laughs> pressure over time. Your body's like, no, no, right. please, please move. Yeah. Please get me out of here. I, I think it's a really common misconception. Mm. Oh, yeah. Because I think. And like I said. That if people, people, a lot of, you know, a lot of people think that if they sit perfectly, yeah. oh, the pain will go away. Mm -hmm. But 
might actually find that you end up getting pain somewhere else. <laughs> That's the thing. You never know. You may get pain somewhere else. You may not. It may not go away, though. Right. It may be like, yeah, it still bothers me. And I'm like, okay. Um, and so it's so hard to say your posture is a problem, especially because as a prof as someone who deals with this, like, I can't sit there and say, yes, it's your posture. I see you for, what, an hour, maybe two, depending right. on how intense it is, a day. I'm not following you around with a video camera. That'd be creepy. All day long, say, watching your posturing throughout yeah. the day. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And so I can ask you a million questions, but, like, let's be real. You don't know how you're sitting half the time. You don't know. It's like, okay, I'm oh, at 20 I'm degrees. Oh, I'm like this. Yeah. I got, like, <laughs> exactly. know, like all see, over the place. <laughs> there's that meme of, like, the person that's, like, a banana, like, upside down. Yeah, that's like, Why does my back hurt? It's like, because you don't know. My leg's know. falling asleep. I'm like, yeah. oh, man. Yeah. Um, now, when you're sleeping, I've heard people that sleep in some, like, when I was personal training, this one. uh Corded ways. Yeah, this one girl would tell me, she like, I sleep, uh like, the crisscrossed legs um that way they 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 she sits sleeps that way her legs crisscross and folded over i'm like huh how do you sleep that way like very <laughs> odd i was like okay <laughs> but you know what i mean but like that's eight hours of your day sleeping right you know remember so, i asked you about that too even with my lower back i was like could that be playing into it at all and it could mm -hmm. like i think i said get a body pillow i didn't sleeper. change anything about the way i sleep i just started doing the lower back extension and Everything's That's fine. Right. There you go. Yeah. See, problem solved. <laughs> Embracing uh, my squat correctly, so yes. it wasn't my sleep. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we try to find, we try to find things that sometimes when it's just the simple answer is get stronger mm -hmm. or move more. Mm -hmm. But we find try to find other answers like the, I love that. the yeah yeah the one uh, I took a course a while back. I think it was like a year ago, two years ago. I don't know what year it is. It was probably two years ago because of COVID. Um, and I remember like the guy was talking and he was assessing someone's posture and looking at it. And he was like, all right, so like, there's this, 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 or whatever. And he's going through. And I was like, all right, like this guy seems, and he's like, yeah, like, right. And we're like, Oh, right. Right. Shoulders higher than left shoulder or no right. Shoulders lower than left shoulder. And I'm like, and I, we're like, Oh, that's not ideal. And he's like, well, usually there's going to be actually a, a little bit of a decline on the dominant hand uh, mm -hmm. side. Like, so like when people look at that stuff, it's like, well, he's like, you kind of notice a trend that that's, common and you can think of maybe it's because a lot of stuff you do with your right dominant hand if you are right-handed or your dominant hand you lean forward onto that and press that shoulder down onto a table when you're typing mm -hmm. when you're reading and all that stuff when you're cooking you're kind of using that side downwards a little bit more yeah. so to look at that and be like oh that's definitely the reason why he has shoulder pain because look how low the right side is compared to the left mm -hmm. and it's like eh. No, <laughs> you know, yeah. it could be many other reasons why he has shoulder pain, like hundreds of other reasons. So you can't always sit there and be like, oh, yes, it's definitely this. Right. And like I said, I'm not with people 24 seven to say, uh huh. It's your posture. I don't know right. what you're doing all day long. Right. I see you when you're with me. I see you for oh. like a short amount of time and we talk about it. Right. Right. I have another question. Oh, yeah. What's up? Um, with him balances i mean most people tend to be stronger on their dominant mm -hmm. side right uh i find it the opposite really yes i have a theory i have a theory okay. it has not been tested i want to hear not, it i have not reached i have to actually look into research articles on it to see if it's true okay. um i just haven't gotten around to it i believe that people are more dominant more strong on their non-dominant side because that's where you use more gross movement patterns for example, you're using your car keys and house keys to get into your house or car with your right hand because that's your fine hand. Mm -hmm. You can do things very well. If you try to write lefty, if you're right-handed, it kind of looks very sloppy, you know? Right. So right. what are you carrying? Your person, the bags, and all that other stuff. Oh. Your non-dominant side, which that's then cool, again, yeah. that raises that question of is if your right shoulder is high, lower than your left shoulder and you're right-handed, your right one is reaching down to do things more your left side is usually pulling things up like holding a suitcase or bag or whatever so, maybe be. so like upper body you might tend to see the dominant or the non-dominant side a little bit stronger yes yeah yeah Th that's what i'm talking about sorry uh, upper body specifically yeah for my theory yeah, yeah, yeah i haven't really seen much in the left the lower extremity to be like oh definitely um but i've always countless times people are like so weird my left side stronger than my right and my right's my dominant side i'm like yeah that can happen and i got i tell everybody later i was like this is a theory it's not proven i don't know if there's studies to, <laughs> to back it but i'm 
but this is my thought process. No, that's, of, I mean, it makes sense. I, I would, when I think about myself, I do that. Yeah, that's and why I, I'm like, make, wait a second. <laughs> I do feel like um, I've actually never paid attention with my upper body, mm. but I feel like with my lower body, my mm -hmm. dominant side is dominant. Yeah. And I've seen that with clients in their lower body too. Mm -hmm. Regardless of whatever side is dominant, this is why it's also important to include single yes. uh, leg or single side mm -hmm. exercises in your workout routine because then it's isolated to that side and that side has to work for that entire yep. load. Because yes. if you're in something like a deadlift or a squat or even a chest press, you can dump into that dominant or the stronger side, mm -hmm. whether it's your dominant or non-dominant. Of course. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the main thing uh, you want to think about is like, okay, you're going you're gonna to do what your body wants to do. I'm mm -hmm. actually making a post about this cool. later of like, your body's going to get done what it wants to do because it will. Mm -hmm. So you're going to use whatever you can, whether it's more spinal flexion. Always so looking more, for the easiest path, right? Yeah, the path of least yeah. resistance. Right. That's physics 101. Yeah. It's just what happens. <laughs> um, and so our body's going to do that. And whatever it may be is going to happen. So if we can do our best to equally transmit forces through our body, no one's going to be perfect ever. You're never going to see somebody's like kilograms of force with knee extension be a hundred on one side. That's a lot. So let's say 10, 10 on one side and exactly 10 on the other uh -huh. side. You'll see like 12 and maybe 10.5 or 11.5. Uh -huh. And people get caught up in those numbers sometimes, but it doesn't really mean much because that's not that. You want it as close as possible, but you don't need to go crazy. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a hundred percent because nobody mm -hmm. is. It goes with neural things. It goes with neural pathways in your brain, how well your brain's connecting. There's just no way to be 100% perfect. So imbalances are normal. The neural it's the connection is what I find most interesting. Yes. Well, that's where, like, you know, when you first start lifting, you get the newbie gains. It's and the, like, yeah. <laughs> so cool. Like, and then all it is is you're not getting stronger. All it is is the neural pathways are connecting right. more. And you're like, oh, your muscles are learning to recruit themselves. Right. And then you get that plateau where a lot of people give up because they're like, well, I, 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 I'm not progressing anymore. It's like, no, 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 you're, you're progressing. It's just now you're get building real strength as opposed to neural yeah. adaptation, yeah. which is such a cool thought. It is. It, the, cool <laughs> I'm telling you, the human body is one of the most unreal things. Thing. Yeah. I agree. I could nerd out on it all day long. I just yeah. had another question for you too. And it, it just, oh, you know, I'm just going to bring up the point of like post in, uh, post injury or surgery, mm -hmm. how we will subconsciously dump weight into the side that, wasn't hurt yeah and we will uh not put as much weight on the side that was hurt mm -hmm. or we had surgery on yeah and then it becomes that much more important to pay attention to some of those imbalances through like single-sided exercises yeah and it's it's knowing how to do it not correctly is not the mm -hmm. right word knowing to do it how to do it safely yeah you know like yeah if you're <laughs> if you're like five years post-op we can load that bad yeah. boy <laughs> but if you're, you know what I mean? But if you're pretty, if you're pretty fresh, it's like, okay, well, wait a second. Let's, let's chill yeah. for a second. Yeah. Let's figure out what, how much we can safely load it comparable to the other side. Right. And then it was funny this weekend, someone was talking about, it's like, it's Sherrington's law of irrit irrit uh, irritation. I don't know if you've mm -hmm. heard of it. It's like muscle irritation. It's like the theory of working one side extensively can transmit some forces through the other side and get a little bit stronger. Mm -hmm. And it's more with stroke patients and um, total brain injuries and all that stuff. Now, but, is that because of the neurological yes. adaptations? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it still can, but your brain's working, like it kind of works the both. So like there, we, there's knowing how to do it safely is what it really comes down to is like, okay, where are we in there? Can we really load it? Can we not really load it? But okay. like you do want to do that unilateral work just to help yourself feel more confident on that, that side, get that brain connection, mm -hmm. mind muscle connection to that left side. So when you do a compound move, you're not dumping into your easiest form mm -hmm. or the easiest way to do it. Oh. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're doing a maximal effort lift, yes, posture, form, form breakdown is going to happen, all that yeah. stuff. But it's, can we be as efficient as possible while doing that maximum yeah. effort lift? Yeah. Definitely. And here's another question too. If when you're training single side mm -hmm. and one side is clearly stronger than the other, should you continue to push on that side or yeah. should you kind of wait till things level out? No, no you can push that side okay. um, because it's single sided. So like, I don't think you're going to make the gains that you're, I think like, correct me if I'm wrong. I think you're like maybe asking 
will that one side that's stronger get exponentially stronger than the left and the left won't ever catch mm -hmm. up or whatever it is. So right. That's right. not entirely, no. Right. Because like I said, because you're never going to be perfect. So like, unless you are so one-sided with that would, but that would then come down to one, if you had like something crazy happen, like a stroke, right. uh, brain injury, spinal cord injury, something like that. But then again, it goes back to like the irritation, pro the muscle irritation that's thing cool. where you're working one side side you may still get stimulus even if you are pushing one side more you're still getting stimulus towards the other side not a lot of stimulus but it's enough that where i don't think i really don't think you would be able to create that much more of an imbalance for yourself like we're talking like this one's 100 percent and this one's at 20 percent. right, right. Exactly. if you keep pushing that's at 150 and that one's at 25 like i don't think that's possible okay now i don't know right. I, i'll do some research on that and let you know yeah um, but i'm not really i don't think that's actually possible okay. to make it that much of a difference okay. <laughs> That's cool. Well, I like, I feel like this was awesome. So I'm probably just going to post the whole video to my Instagram. And then perfect. Um, but this was really cool. We should definitely yeah. do another one like it. Definitely. Um, <laughs> next week, I think we'll take off for the live just because it's a holiday week. Yeah. And since you'll be home, we'll, uh, we'll meet up and discuss for future plans and all that. Stuff. Yeah, let's um, do it. And we can plan out our lives for the next few months or so or possibly weeks, months, whatever it is well that too yeah. yes so exactly we can plan it all out from there um but yeah awesome stuff like i said when you learn more and more about the body and like how certain things we used to believe and even like me as a practitioner calling myself out for my own biases it's like wow like you have to check yourself sometimes yeah like are you just Definitely. trying to find something wrong with somebody so you can tell them this is wrong so you can work with them or like is there something that you want to do you know what i mean mm-hmm um Spot so on. yeah Spot so on. we'll <laughs> we'll keep crushing Sweet. it um enjoy your christmas enjoy your holiday Thanks, i will you see, hopefully i will see you next week uh, um well, yeah we'll make a point of it honestly if we're gonna take off from the live tuesday works so if oh perfect you know yeah it should um but i'll confirm with you okay all right sounds good i'll talk to you soon all right bye, bye.